President Macron wants to create a so-called Islam for France, but will his flagship initiative survive? Some French Muslim groups have rejected Macron's charter of principles, a cornerstone of his plan to fight what he calls extremist Islam. This is Roundtable. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Emmanuel Macron wanted Muslim organizations to sign up to a document setting out relations between the state and Islam. But not all have agreed, and the future of the Charter is in doubt. In October last year, French President Emmanuel Macron claimed that a law was needed to fight what he has called Islamic separatism. At the centre of his plans is a Charter of Principles, a document meant to ensure that Muslim groups are aligned with the values of the French Republic. It includes articles on discrimination, the equality of men and women, the rejection of political Islam and the freedom to change religion. Mr Macron said the Charter offered a clarification of how the Muslim community is organised. But three organisations from the French Council of Muslim Worship denounced the Charter. They said it risks weakening the bonds of trust, as well as undermining the honour of Muslims. So where does this leave Emmanuel Macron's flagship policy? Will he succeed in creating an Islam for France? Well, joining us on Roundtable today, we have Nasira Genif Suilamas joining us from Paris. She's a professor of sociology at University of Paris 8. Also joining us from Paris, we have Idris Sihamedi founder of Muslim NGO Baraka City, and Anne-Elizabeth Moutet, a political commentator. Good to have all of you with me. Um, Idris, let me start with you. I want to ask you what you make of Macron's so-called Charter of Republican Values. What does it mean for Muslim communities? Uh, that means a uh, very important thing. Um, I think uh, the situation in France is very critical. And we can uh, see that a lot of people around the world uh, understand that in uh, America, in Australia, in the UK, and in Arabic, con Arabic countries. And uh, clearly, Macron uh, said uh, Islam, Islam in, in crisis. So uh, I, I think uh, that means uh, French state clearly had, uh, have a, a serious problem uh, with uh, the um, with, uh, with uh, the Islam or the Muslim community. So, um, yes. Yeah, so when Macron said uh, he believed Islam was a religion in, in crisis, that was very offensive to many Muslims, wasn't it? Yes, of course. Of but, course but can I ask you, uh, Idris, because your group, Baraka City, uh, is one of those that's been targeted by the French government. Um, they claim it has links to radical uh, Islamist movements. It's accused you personally of inciting hatred and violence. So can I ask, is it not in your interests and in the interests of Muslim groups as a whole to sign up to Macron's vision of Islam in France, which is a, a peaceful, non-political Islam? Yes, uh, it's, a, it's a big problem that I, uh, we have uh, in, in France. Um, it's uh, the, 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 French, uh, the French government of Macron uh, try to find any anything about uh, about uh, any um, uh, any uh, oppo uh, opposant. So we have, for example, uh, I was targeted uh, by uh, by the um, by the French uh, French authorities uh, with a fake uh, information, fake uh, files, fake news, fake information, wrong information. Why? It's only uh, to 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 share a doubt. Uh, uh, on on uh, on on the the uh, on the uh, in in the um, uh, around the world. So like that, I can explain on bar with Baraka City. We can be credible. We can be. We can't be. Uh, be uh, some people can't uh, uh, can have a, a some doubt uh, against uh, against uh, Baraka City on me. Um, I have beer. I'm Muslim. I, 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 I said a lot of time I'm normal. And before that, uh, the, the, the French media mainstream, that uh, is not normal, that this guy, he considered himself 
uh, uh, like uh, normal normal people, you know. So okay. it's a serious problem. Okay, Nasira, uh, let me ask you: Should France be getting involved in how a religion operates? Because isn't it a principle in France that French citizens have a right to practice religion freely? Uh, actually, the the 1905 law. Uh, states two things that might seem to be uh, opposed one to another. On the one hand, it's the freedom of uh, belief and the freedom of uh, practice of religion. And on the other hand, it's also the, in, the Ministry of Interior in France is the Minister of Cults also. It's not just the Minister of Interior. So it has um, some entitlement to get involved in the way uh, cults are being practiced. Uh, yet one ma must add the fact that uh, after 1905 law, it was mainly about pushing out of the public space the majority religion, which was Catholicism back then. And it seems that this kind of endeavor now is being opposed to Muslims and to Islam in France. So the, the main religion that is under scrutiny by the French state for like the past half a century. But this, now this charter has been that Macron wants Muslim groups to sign up to, the two strongest principles are a rejection of political Islam and foreign interference in, in Muslim, Muslim groups. I mean, that would seem to be straightforward, wouldn't it? What's, what's the problem? Yes, but uh, do we need a charter to implement that? I mean, uh, how many organizations have been funded by foreign uh, organizations or how far did, did it go uh, so much so that all Muslims would be involved in some sort of a political Islam? I mean, there's a way there in this kind of uh, charter that is being put to the fore to target Muslims, to uh, lump them uh, on the whole with some sort of a extremist, political, violent terrorist groups and uh, to put the, the blame for this on all Muslims that would have to comply with this. Yet so far, they did. Most of Muslims in France are not involved in radical Islam. They are not involved in Islamism, as we say in France, and they are not involved in uh, radicalization or any kind of terrorism. Okay. So why now? Uh, Anne Elizabeth, let me get your view, because Macron says what he's doing is protecting the state's secular values. But the criticism is, of course, that all Muslim groups are being stigmatized by his policies. Is this charter the right response to the issue of Islamist radicals? I think the charter belongs to an old tradition, and Nasira is quite right to quote the 1905 bill. And she's also right to say that in 1905, it was a pushback against the Catholic Church, which was had been since the French Revolution for an entire century, the voice of reaction. And then the relationship between the Catholic Church and, and the rest of the country and the state became much more pacified. And, and uh, many of the religious orders that had to leave France in 1905 were then allowed to come back. So it's a good comparison. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, it, it's uh, something that belongs to a French tradition. I'd like to redefine what the French call secularism. Secularism is not something against religion. It is something that provides for the neutrality of the public space, but religion is protected. And in the current charter, uh, it is, you know, there's a reminder at the beginning that this is there to protect religions and also to protect Islam. Now, about the charter itself, the charter itself, and this is where that might be. I mean, I, I can see what the Charter is trying to achieve. And as you said earlier, Shuli, it is completely sensible to say we do not want foreign influence. We do not want the uh, uh, extremism. We don't want radicalization. Nasira is also right that according to figures, uh, uh, the, the large majority of French Muslims and according to polls are against those things. But there's also worry in France that the, the uh, language of radicalization takes hold, especially with the young, with the easily influenceable. Now, is the charter the right answer? The charter, first of all, the charter was elaborated with imams. It is an interesting French document because it quotes lavishly from the Quran. Uh, you can argue that in 1905, most of the French, even they fought, if they fought against the Catholic Church, all knew more or less what the Catholic Church was all about, whereas 
Islam is less known and the, the various aspects of Islam and quotation from the Quran, from the Hadith, from the Prophet are actually a very good thing in terms of making the rest of the French aware that all of this is completely, as, and I quote from the Charter, compatible with the values of the French Republic. Okay, well, well let me bring, I know, because I see that Nasir is trying to, to, to answer uh, some of your points. What, what do you say yeah, to that? Sir? Yeah, I think that's really interesting to, to think about one point that is in the Charter, which had to do with the other countries, foreign countries, especially Muslim countries, getting involved in uh, French policy and polity. Well, it seems that uh, there's a double standard there, because uh, when you think, for example, of the Institute of... Uh, uh, the, the, the Islamic Culture Institute in Paris, uh, which has a prayer room uh, inside the building, it was uh, they, the, the Paris mayor got in touch directly with the French mosque uh, that takes place in Paris, which is notable. Everybody knows about the fact that it's being close to the Algerian state. So you know, even the French state is doing this kind of thing about negotiating with foreign states about uh, the way uh, Muslims are acting or reacting or misbehaving in France. Do you, do you agree with that, Idris? Do you, so do you believe there, there is, a, is a double standard there? A double standard uh, operating in France. And this is more about how Macron views Islam in France. Yeah, right, because if you think of the way, for example, at the same time that uh, the French state is, uh, okay, trying to accommodate some sort of, ex of, uh, of uh, ordinary Islam in France, at the, same, at the same time, the same state is negotiating with Morocco, with Algeria, with Libya, and so on and so forth. In order to control immigration coming to France, they are the ones that must do the job. Well, in that you know, case, the dirty so can, job can I of keeping Muslims out of France? Can I can I put that point to Idris? If if this is the case that Muslims in France believe there's a double standard operating, then why did the majority of Muslim organisations sign up to this charter? Only only three said they didn't want to. Oh, because a uh, French state sent. Um, a strong message, a strong message to America City, a strong message to CCIF, a strong message for uh, more than uh, 70 mosques. So uh, now uh, we can see that um, the French state uh, are targeting um, uh, targeting the, the 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 Muslims on the on the imam. So no one, no one won't talk about the Islam. It's the condition exactly uh it's exactly what macron want uh but it, Idris, to, Idris, why wouldn't muslim groups sign up to this because it refers to ideals which moderate muslims say they agree with uh, you know equality for women an end to forced marriages keeping islam out of politics isn't that what moderate muslims adhere to anyway um i think because a lot of muslims are uh, um, want to believe uh, as they want. It's a, it's a very simple. So a lot of Muslims don't want to to sign this uh, uh, this uh, this proposition of uh, of Macron. So um, I, I thought most had. Sorry, am I, I? I thought most groups had signed up to it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Because I told you. As told you, most uh, if, if we can see uh, if we can see that most groups signed this uh, uh, this proposition uh, by Macron, it's because Macron sent a strong message to some organizations, uh, the targeted uh, organizations. It's a plan. It's a, a political game. I see. Game. They've been put under pressure to to sign up. Um, with this... pressure, with with pressure, no one want to talk about. The Islam. It's a uh, condition of. It's uh, exactly the meaning. Deep, deeply, the meaning of of Macron want exactly. You have to accept all Islam, but you can't believe in your Islam. So for that, he made pressure. He uh, he 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 broke. He killed some organizations, the biggest, the largest organizations. So now, no one to talk and to to engage any confrontation against okay. uh, Macron. 
This is what uh, the president of the French Council of Muslim Worship uh, said, Mohammed Musawi. He was talking about the refusal of three groups to sign the charter. He said, through these repetitive actions, the groups all risk being held responsible for this situation of division. Uh, Anne Elizabeth, if this charter isn't supported by all Muslim groups, if Muslim groups feel that they've been put under pressure to sign up to it, isn't it doomed to failure? I don't know, first of all, because there's a large, much larger number of Muslim organizations that signed this charter. Second, because I really would like to have sort of facts about that so-called pressure brought on, on groups to, to, to sign for this. There are, you know, those three groups have not signed and therefore they're still there. And, and I can see that, you know, nothing bad happened to them. That they had, nobody came to arrest them in the night. France is not a police state. So uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I take issue with that. But mostly you've got lots of people. The, the way Muslim communities are represented in France uh, does not mean that it represents all French Muslim citizens. And therefore, uh, uh, the representative itself was uh, uh, taken by, it was under Nicolas Sarkozy, it had been prepared under Lionel Jospin, and the, idea, the, the representativity of groups was decided according to square acreage of mosques. Uh, but that's already, that already created strange discrepancies because it is perfectly well known in France that most mosques have been financed by, by foreign countries. And Nasir is quite right to say that the Grand Mosquée de Paris has links with the Algerian regime. Historically, there are reasons because of France's uh, colonial past, if you will. Um, and the mosque was built in the, in the 1920s. Um, but lots of groups and lots of people who just practice but do, are not very active were not represented at all. Um, it's understandable also why mosques at the beginning were financed by foreign uh, countries, and that's because in France, mo or the churches that are financed by the, French, by the French state are only those which were built after 1905, but the immense bulk of French churches date from the Middle Ages, the Baroque era, etc. So uh, the, there was a need for means uh, for, for mosques that did not exist for, for churches and to a lesser extent to, for Protestant temples and even synagogues in France. Uh, on the other hand, so the charter doesn't say that this financing is not allowed. It says that it should be reduced over time because it acknowledges this discrepancy in, fine, in funding Islam. But I'm not saying that those very vocal organizations who decided to take a stand and say, no, we're not signing this, I don't think they represent a majority. I think they represent an extremely vocal and, and well-organized minority. But do, do, uh, well, let me bring Nasira in. Nasira, do, do you agree with that? Uh, well, I would rather say that uh, the CFCM in the first place was uh, an endeavor from the state top down and not the other way around. Uh, because when you think of grassroots uh, Muslim movements in France, uh, they don't feel represented by uh, any organization that uh, sits at the CFCM right now. So this is a real issue. What kind of representation or representativity would would this kind of charter have at the end of the day when it's signed, since a lot of Muslims uh, would easily say that they do not feel represented by these organizations. So in this endeavor to kind of maybe mend the relations that have become so tense between Muslims and the French state, well, it is maybe doomed to failure. And I would like to add something about the fact that Muslims wouldn't feel under pressure let me remind your uh, viewers that since 2015, the state of emergency has been implemented, reinstated in France, and it targets exclusively, most almost exclusively Muslims who have been, you know, there have been like police coming uh, in the middle of the night, uh, asking them questions, take, taking them into custody. This has been going on for uh, now almost six years. So let's have in mind the fact that the Muslims are targeted by the media, by the general opinion about are they disloyal. I mean, they always have to comply with all kind of uh, questions and. Uh, but but there so is a. Um, I mean, to just to play anything that they just to play devil's advocate on on behalf of, of of President Macron, if I may. You know, France mm -hmm. has suffered some 
horrific attacks. The beheading of Samuel Paty, I think, was a, a real turning point, particularly in Emmanuel Macron's mind. And Macron is worried about young people getting caught up in ideology, getting radicalized in these ghettos and suburbs, which he freely acknowledges are a problem in France. Idris, is Macron right to be worried about how young people can become radicalized by outside influences? And that is part of what he's trying to stop when he talks about this type of French Islam. The, the, the first attack is not the first attack, uh, sadly. But in 2015, the attacks was very, very serious. On, we saw more than uh, 2,000 uh, young people was in Syria. So why now he decided to, to, to change his speech? In 2017, uh, Marine Le Pen said, you approve, you allow uh, the Burkini, you love that, you know? So he changed everything. He changed the mentality. He changed uh, himself. So the question now, in 2015, it was very, very, very dangerous. Uh, there are a lot of cases, a lot of young people. Now we have only one, two or three cases. And he target any, uh, uh, any, uh, uh, anyone, any Muslims. There is serious confusion. And uh, he had to be clear. And the French state have to be clear. We have a, a, a lot of people, and specifically the Muslim community, want to be exactly to know exactly why the uh, the Macron uh, changed uh, his speech. Because well, well in critics would say, cynics would say, he's done it to try and win ground from the far right because he's got uh, one eye on the elections in 2022. Um, and Elizabeth, is that is that he, he's he's quite threatened by Marine Le Pen, for example. Is this part of his plan to try and claw back some ground from the far right? Of course, he's interested in the election in 2022. That makes perfect sense. I think actually he wants Marine Le Pen as an opponent because she's probably the only opponent that he is absolutely certain of vanquishing and vanquishing easily, perhaps not as easily as in 2017, where he was new and shiny. And now the, the people have seen him rule for, will have seen him rule for five years and they're not happy with everything. But yes, of course, it's part of it. Uh, but there's also a part of what he has learnt being in charge of you know, the country and therefore getting uh, the studies and, and the research and, and the, uh, um, the, you know, the ongoing examination and investigations about terrorism in France. And again, I'm saying this is uh, only a tiny minority that's concerned, but that's something that has become truly frightening. And I think he has changed because, honestly, he was Minister of Economy before that. And before that, he was an aide at the Elysee. And he didn't know as much of that. It was not a specialty of his at all. So he may have changed also because he was confronted with reality. And certainly the beheading of Samuel Paty, the fact that one, they, some of the school children gave the information to where Paty lived to the killer who came from another city and was not related to this in any way. That was one thing that shocked him immensely. Uh, just um, briefly, Anna, I... sorry, Nasira, carry I... on. Yes, yes. Uh, may I add that uh, the project of all this uh, bill and uh, the charter was on on the table on uh, of Emmanuel Macron even before the horrific assassination of uh, uh, Samuel Paty. So I think that he has this in mind for quite a long time. This is not just occurred after, after this uh, terrible event. So let's keep in mind that. Uh, for example, Emmanuel Macron, as the candidate for the presidency, was able to say in Algeria, so he must have studied the subject, I guess, uh, that uh, the colonization in Algeria was a crime against humanity. And he then backed from this kind of statement. And he's far from saying anything that close now. So, so Nasira, can I ask you, because we're, just, we're coming to the end of the show, and I'm just interested to get uh -huh. your thoughts. Is Macron succeeding or failing in creating his brand of Islam in France? Uh, currently, I think he's, uh, he's failing precisely because he has this kind of double standard. On the one hand, he's being very tough and he's targeting Muslims. 
uh, those that do not, uh, who want to engage with the Republic and be critical and be constructive and and take part in building uh, uh, some uh, some way of belonging to the French Republic in case they didn't already did. Which very very do. quickly, Idris, uh, do you agree? But uh, but I don't think that the charter is the right way to do that because it's top down. One again, once again, it's not okay. grassroots movement. Okay, Idris, a uh, last thought from you: Is 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 Macron succeeding or failing? Uh, clearly failing. Uh, clearly, uh, because no non Muslims uh, accept uh, and uh, accept and uh, recognize a C a CFCM CFCM. Uh, has created by uh, by the interior ministry, so it's really uh, not, uh, it's it's a fail. Yeah, yes, uh, he, he failed. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to have to leave the discussion there, but uh, it was really fascinating, and I thank all of you for joining me, Nasira, Idris, and Anne Elizabeth. Thank you. And you can see more of this discussion on our YouTube channel. Search for TRT World Roundtable. But for now, from me and all the team here, bye-bye. Thanks for watching.